Hey, it's Maggie. I'm a high school English teacher from North Carolina, and I am currently doing remote learning, distance learning, online learning, whatever your school is calling it because of the coronavirus. And I have been really trying to make my lessons as engaging and as interactive as they would have been in class, which is really hard. But there are a lot of apps and websites that you can use during this time to do that. A lot of them are giving out free subscriptions or free trials during this time. I would suggest trying as many of them as you can, just playing around with them. And then you can figure out which ones you may actually want to use and which ones may be good for your students. Now, I would not suggest using all of them with your students. That can overwhelm them and make them confused. But if you select just a few that you think would work really good for your kids, then that can definitely increase the interactive nature of your online learning. I have three apps that I have been using religiously um, with my students over this time. We are currently in, I'm planning week five right now. So I have used them every week. They work great. They are easy and they are free, which is my main concern right now. Um, I'm going to be talking about all three of them. The one that I'm not really going to talk about, but it's going to kind of get talked about on the back end is Canvas. Canvas is a learning management system and it's the one that my district uses. I love Canvas. Um, I know a lot of people use Google Classroom, but I really feel like Canvas is a lot easier and it can do a lot more than Google Classroom can do. I just wanted to say that kind of upfront because you're gonna hear me talk about Canvas and I didn't want you to be lost. I would maybe look into it if your district doesn't use it or maybe your district does use it but you've never used it before. And the three apps I'm gonna be talking about today are Screencastify, Edpuzzle, and Learning Apps. Um, and I will link all three of them below so that you can access them and let's get on with the show. The first app we're going to talk about is Screencastify and I also have a code that you can use so that you can have a premium subscription right now as an educator um, so that you can have that for free. Screencastify lets you screen record what you're doing on your computer and make it into a video for students. The reason I like this even more than just QuickTime or the MacBook recording that you can do is you also can put yourself as a little webcam video down in the bottom screen and it does audio. So they're seeing what you're doing on your screen, they're seeing your face, and they're hearing audio. Now you can turn off the video of the webcam you can also turn off the uh, audio if you don't need it I have been loving this because I have been using it to read the story to my students and explain it and ask them questions along the way I've also been using it because my inclusion classes sometimes need video directions. They need to see what I need them to click on. They need to see what I want them to do. They need to hear me saying it. And Screencastify has allowed me to do that in a very, very simple way. So let me show you how it works. When you install Screencastify, it's actually a Google Chrome extension. And you can select if you want it to record your desktop or just the browser. And then you'll see I'm playing with the microphone and webcam buttons. This is how it looks. It does a countdown when you first start. And then you can see there's my video down in the bottom. I'm not doing any audio with this because obviously I'm doing a voiceover right now. And if I wanted to show my students how to get to something on Canvas, they are able to see my screen just like you are and see exactly what I'm doing. When you're done recording, you just push that button on the tab again and then you can hit pause or stop. 
and it's going to take you to this different screen. This screen has the video you just made and it gives you a lot of options. It can give you a link if you just want to share the link with students in Google Drive. Um, it also has a built-in editor, which is a little bit wonky, but I mean, hey, it works. There's share buttons to get an embed code, which you can use in Canvas. You could share it in Google Classroom, publish it to YouTube. It even does QR codes. And then, of course, you can also download it or export it. So there's just a lot of free and easy options to use within Screencastify. And here's all my recordings I've made lately. Who is a lot. The second app that I have been loving is Edpuzzle. And for me, Edpuzzle and Screencastify have been working together for me. So I use Screencastify to record my video and then I upload that video into Edpuzzle. What Edpuzzle allows me to do is build either multiple choice questions or open-ended questions for my students to complete while they watch the video. We know that sometimes when we tell students to watch videos that they may not actually watch them or they may skip ahead or they may be pretending to watch them but doing something else. So this requires them to answer the questions along the way and they can't skip ahead if you uh, enable that option. I have also been embedding these Ed Puzzles directly into Canvas for my students to complete. Um, it's also available as an LTI tool in Canvas if you know what that is. So let me show you how Ed Puzzle works. So I have uploaded a video that I made on Screencastify into Ed Puzzle. And you'll see um, this is the actual video playing right now. And what you do is as you watch your video, you stop it at certain points to input questions. Now there are two types of questions, multiple choice questions and open-ended questions. Multiple choice questions will grade themselves, meaning if the whole thing was multiple choice questions, there's nothing you have to do as the teacher except export the grades to your LMS, um, which for me is Canvas. However, if you do open-ended questions um, and students type answers, you will obviously have to grade those. However, I found that it's pretty simple to do so. So when you actually want to input a question, you just stop the video and click which type of question you want it to be. So um, I actually ask questions as I'm reading the story. So all I have to do is just listen for one of those questions and then stop it and add the question. Um, but you could do it any way you wanted to. So I asked them, what does Joe Costa mean when she says, does Creon speak from knowledge or hearsay? And then I'm going to input some answers. So this is a multiple choice question. So obviously only one of the answers is right. I try to make these pretty simple for kids, especially since the text we're reading is Oedipus and it is very difficult to understand. Um, and all you have to do is either mark it with the check mark or the X to show that it's correct or incorrect. When you are done typing your questions, you just go down and hit save. It'll show you the question. You just kind of proof it and make sure it looks right. And then you can start on the next one. Um, this is a very simple system to use. You also can provide feedback for each question if you wanted to, which I like, especially for the open-ended questions. You also can insert notes where you can add some audio over it or a picture. Like, for instance, when I talked about um, Oedipus's ankles being pierced, I inserted a picture so they could kind of see what that would look like and think, ugh, that's awful. Because um, in class, that's something I would normally do. When you use the external tool to embed this Ed Puzzle into Canvas, it kind of looks like this. On our end, on the student's end, it's just the video, um, but it gives you a place to see all your students at once. You get to see who has completed it, how much they've completed, when the last time they looked at it was, and it's just giving you a lot of feedback that's very helpful during this time. If you want to embed it, I just click external tool as the submission type and you can click Ed Puzzle to enable it. 
And the last app I wanted to talk about is not really an app, it's a website, but it has app in the name, whatever. And it is learning apps, all one word. And this website allows you to create free games for your students to play. And then you can grab the embed code and directly put them into Canvas or whatever you're using with your students. Um, you also can just send them the link if you're only uh, able to communicate with your students through Gmail or email or whatever. Um, you can make so many different types of games. You can do matching. You can do putting things in order. They have Hangman. They have Crossword. Um, they have just so many options. And my kids so far have really liked it. This is really good um, for formative assessment um, and practice. You don't have to take a grade for it. You could just have them playing it. However, since I have to do grades during this time, I'm having students submit a screenshot and then uploading it when they're done to prove to me that they've played it. And that's how I'm giving them credit for doing it. So let me show you about learning apps. So this is a game I made for the prologue of Oedipus. It's a matching game. And you get to type the directions for students so they're matching the characters and events to their correct partners. And it's literally like old-fashioned matching, if you remember that, where you have to flip the cards over and find their match, but also, um, you know, you have to kind of remember where they are, which makes it a little bit more fun. Some students may struggle with this version because, you know, it takes a long time. Um, this is me playing it, and you'll see even I was struggling a little bit to remember where things were. When they make a match, the game automatically makes those two cards disappear, which is nice. And then when they completely finish, um, it will pop up something that essentially says you did it. It also at the top will tell you how many turns it took for them to get it. Um, one of my teacher friends said she didn't love this one because obviously kids could just click and click and click until they get the right answers. But, you know, I had a student who played it for 81 turns to get the right answer. And, hey, he's learning something while he's playing. This next one is a sorting game, which I use with rhetoric. So they have to match the examples with the different types being used, whether it's ethos, pathos, or logos. So they just drag the example to wherever it goes. So this one is an example of ethos. This one is logos. And this one is pathos. And then when they're done, they can hit this check mark and it will turn them either green or red to let them know if they're correct, um, which I like because they're able to check their answers themselves and have some kind of, I don't know what the word is, but they have responsibility of their own learning. This last one is an order of events one. So I use the events from the Miller's Tale. They need to put them in chronological order based on the story. And for this one, this was for my honors class, so it has 20 different events, which would probably be a lot for a normal class, but my senior honors can handle that. And all you do is click the um, event or whatever you've typed and put it in the order. And then when you think you're right, you can again hit this check mark and it will tell you if you are right or wrong by highlighting them either green or red. So I only did two just as an example so you can see, but it's very easily manipulated. And students really like doing this as opposed to questions or book work. I hope all three of these apps were useful for you. I have put the links for all of them and any codes that I have for them down below so that you can access them and try them out with your kids. Again, the, the other app that I didn't really talk about that I use the most is Canvas. Um, if you have any questions about any of those things that we talked about in this video, or if you have any cool apps that you're using during remote learning, if you'll put them down in the comments, that would make me super happy because I love when we all share resources and ideas with each other. I hope that you're surviving this time. I hope that you and your families are healthy and happy, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.